time to get cracking. Hi everybody and welcome back to Plastic Models by Regular Dude and part two of the Dragon 135th scale SDKFZ 184 Elephant Premium Edition. Before I get started with the actual construction, I just want to explain a few things. Um, if you watch my channel before, you know this, and uh, you know you'll just have to hear it again or skip over. For those of you new to the channel or maybe haven't watched too many of my videos, here's what I normally do whenever I am demonstrating certain things. So in a case like this, as you can see, there are six sets of this wheel, six sets of this, two of this, three of these, etc. So what I do in order to prevent boredom on your part and uh, to save time on the overall length of the video, I will demonstrate the first couple of wheels, in this case, how I cut them from the sprue, how I clean them up, and then glue them together. Then the rest of them in the same sub-assemblies, uh, I will do off camera. That way it'll save a little bit of time. So let's dig in. Okay, for step one, first two parts we need are F3 and F2. So I get my F sprue using my handy Tamiya cutter. I will cut an F2. Actually, I'll just go ahead and cut them both because I'm going to demonstrate these. And what I'm doing is I'm cutting them away from the wheel a little bit. And I'll show you why I do that. It's not necessary by any means. A lot of people do things different ways, but this is the way I like to do it. So I cut them like that. Then, using my cutter... These are really flat on one side, so it makes doing this quite easy. So I lay it flat on the surface of the wheel and just cut it off like that. And that should cut it pretty stinking close. Okay. Then I'll do it on this one. And I'm not going to sand them just yet. I'll show you what I do whenever I sand stuff. Whenever I sand wheels. Continue cutting. I'm not being real super careful to get it like ultra close. Because since these are rounded, I want to make sure that uh, they get treated accordingly. Alright, so there we go. So we got those. So then, taking one of each... Okay, they go together like that. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to make sure that the sprue gates are lined up because I like them to be on the same side for uh, later removal. So whoops. So I'm going to get those ready and those ready. Now for this, I'm going to use uh, Tamiya cement. Not extra thin, just orange cap cement. And the reason I'm using this as opposed to Tamiya Extra Thin is because in a case like this, I need to be putting the glue on some flat surfaces. So I'll do that. Whoops. Put them together like that. And then I'm going to twist them to spread the glue evenly and to line up those sprue gates. So there's that one. Same thing here. Doesn't take very much, so don't overdo it. You don't want it squishing out the sides. Twist it and line them up. And then set them aside to dry. So there is how those are going to go. So I'm going to be able to do all of these and all of these off camera. And then I'll come back and show you how I'm going to take care of those sprue gates. Alright, so... These are the first two I did, so they're nice and dry. So 
first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to check and make sure it's not really there's not really too much protruding because if there's too much I'll use my knife kind of trim it down just a little bit like that just to make a little bit less work when it comes to sanding so then I'm going to take one of my sanding sticks and in this case I think I will use Actually, I'm going to use some of my sandpaper because this is what I do so I lay it on a flat hard surface and then just using I'll lay it make sure it's flat on the sandpaper and just roll it back like that that way I get a nice even amount of sanding going on and I generally go all the way around even after I've got the I mean it doesn't take that much material off but I like it to be even I just keep doing that <clears throat> until they're smooth. Now you'll still be able to see the plastic will be a little bit white just from the stress of uh, cutting the part off. But once it's painted, it should be, if done properly, should be mostly invisible. So I'm going to continue on. Doing the same thing to all these road wheels, all these pairs of road wheels, and then I will come back. Okay, so I've got the road wheels done, sanded, and set aside. And what I like to do, don't always do this, but uh, I've got this handy dandy little divider thing here that I like to put parts in to keep them from disappearing until I'm ready to either install them or paint. So I'll get these all put in here and set aside. So next I'm ready to do the drive sprockets. So we've got two, I need to do two, E2 and E1. So E2 whoops Okay, and then <clears throat> I need to clean these up so on stuff like this on the outside the sprue gates butt up against or uh, have a nice defined end point on the tooth of the sprocket so I'm just gonna butt it up against that tooth on the sprocket cut it as flat as humanly possible and then if there's any extra little bits trim that off take a look at it And that looks pretty good. So then do the same thing to the back. Like that. And that. Okay, 
Okay, that looks pretty good. It's a little bit of overhang on the back, so for that I'll use my knife. Trim that off. Okay, then do the same thing for the other one. <clears throat> so something else to consider is oftentimes on sprockets, there's going to be some uh, a seam line in here. And it kind of needs to be removed, especially now if you really want to be, I don't want to say lazy, but if you want to uh, save a little bit of time, do half of the drive sprocket and use that as the part of the drive sprocket that's not engaged on the tracks. So it would be the exposed part. I'm you know, not saying that's the way to do it, but if you know some people want to save a little bit of time if you're on a deadline for a big uh, model show or if you do commission work and you're selling them, <clears throat> it could save you a little bit of time. But I'm going to go all the way around. So this is going to take a little bit. So I'm going to work on this and once I get them all smoothed out, then I'll come back. Okay, now with these done, I can glue these together. Now. It's quite simple. There is uh, a notch right there, and there is a um, key or whatever you want to call it right there. So, and it's nice because this one actually fits together really well. Sometimes on stuff like this, there'll be a bit of slop, and that's kind of a bummer because um, you potentially could get the uh, sprockets not lined up but in this case no problem all right so for this I'm going to use Tamiya Extra Thin now the reason I'm using Tamiya Extra Thin is because it's really awesome glue and um, I'll show you how it works now sometimes now th this do stuff the way you want and lots of stuff works different ways but oftentimes you'll get this somebody will take their to me extra thin and they'll slather it on the part like this and like this and then they'll bumble around with their parts oh where's my parts and they'll get them and they'll get them lined up and they'll stick them together and look at that see what happens it doesn't stick now you can do it if you're quick, but you risk a weak joint or join, however you want to say it. So, and again, I'm not saying that's the wrong way to do it. Lots of people do it. Lots of people have success with it, but the way this glue, any kind of really thin liquids like this is designed to work is like this. Hold your parts together. And when you have a clear shot at the seam, now that's what differentiates whether I use this or I use something like this or something like this, okay? If you can easily get to the seam, you simply take your brush and run it along the seam in capillary action or whatever you call it, will draw it down into the join there where the parts come in contact. Give them a little squeeze and boom. Bob's your uncle, as my friends across the way say. And ta da! So I'm gonna do it again, show you what I do. Put them together like this. And again, if you do it the other way and it works for you, perfect. Sometimes I have trouble getting stuff all lined up and ready to go before it evaporates because this stuff, that's part of the nice thing about this type of cement, is it evaporates really quickly gives you a nice strong bond with 
without having to wait while it sets up. Okay? So boom. Bob, uncle again. Okay? So that's how you do it. Now let me show you something else really quick like while I have this off here. When scraping all this stuff, sometimes there might be just a little bit of debris left in there and it's just sometimes really hard to get it all out. So a nice trick is you just take some of this extra thin and just where you did the scraping, just run some in there and any little bits of shavings or dust or whatever you want to call it, this will basically melt it and it'll smooth everything out nicely. Just make sure you don't get it between your fingers and the plastic because you will have a really dandy finger or thumb print. And those are not fun to have to deal with. So just like that. Sorry, I was almost getting out of frame there, I think. Anytime you have to sand stuff, this is something you can do to help further smooth it. Works great when uh, engraving panel lines in aircraft as well. All right, just like that. So that takes care of step one. So now we can move on to step two. Okay, for step two, we need parts F5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. Okay, so let me get some of those cut off. So again, we need F5, which is this. Five, six, seven, eight. And nine. Okay, so for those, I'm going to use the same methods for cleaning up. <clears throat> this part right here, you just always want to make sure, but as you can see, that is not supposed to be there. What that is, is it's an extra um, part of the injection process where the plastic comes in to form the part. So I'm going to cut that off. I'm going to cut this one off here. Not cut that one off too short because I don't want a flat spot. Cut this part, whoops this off here. Now what I like to do on round stuff like this is cut it at an angle like that to where there's a little sharp piece left and then cut that pretty close to the shape of the curve and then I can take a sanding stick and it's very easy to get that nice and smooth on that round edge. Do the same thing on this side. Like that. Might as well sand these off while I've got my sanding stick out. Now 
there's a little bit right here. So I'm not going to cut that off because I want to make sure it is not part. It's not like a locating point, like a locating pin or something. So I'm going to leave that for now. And here. This part out. I'm going to take my knife and these seam lines here. I'm going to scrape those smooth. Now, here's something to watch for an aid in uh, scraping or sanding or whatever. So, you've heard me scrape a little bit of this. This part over here is dull. This part right here, hopefully, you can see all this in the camera, is still shiny. That means I haven't got down far enough to make that seam. Or that uh, that molding seam line disappear yet but it's scraping the outside of this so that means I'm keeping it level so I'm on the right track and you could sand it or file it or whatever you like but I'm a I'm a scraping dude I even have this jolly scraper here that my pal HG Barnes sent me if you're watching HG still use this thing on every single build I just go all the way around that scraping it just like that getting it down smooth so I wanted to do a quick test fit and check something out and here's something again to look at so this part fits like this <clears throat> So, because of that, you might not want to clean all this underneath here. Again, it's just a time saver. Am I encouraging such shoddy behavior? No, I'm not. I'm just saying, if scraping and cleaning stuff is just a drag, then you could leave that since it's going to be facing straight down. And in reality, you could also leave the tops. Uh, I personally like to clean it all off <clears throat> just because, but you know, you're going to have fenders on here and everything else and tracks, and it's mostly going to be invisible between that and the wheels. But again, I'm just bringing that up for those who might just really find it tedious to do that kind of work. And uh, there are many people who do, so just some food for thought right there. That kind of thing, that kind of stuff is not your thing, then uh, <clears throat> you can opt out of it. So that part's cleaned up and ready to go. So now we've got this here. I'm just going to cut these off thusly. Here's another one of those. Sprue gates that need to be cut off. I don't know what the technical term is for that little piece, but wherever it is, it needs to go. Okay, so that one's clean. And that one's clean. Okay, so now all these parts have to be glued together so I'm going to start with this one here and the reason for that is because I may want to clean up the seam lines <clears throat> so there's locating pins here and here corresponding holes here and here 
together like that. And then take the old <clears throat> I'm gonna use quick setting for this because these are bowed just a little bit. So I want it to set up really quickly. So extra thin quick setting is the same stuff, just sets up faster. Quick setting. Just like that. So I'll do the same thing here. low on this stuff there we go <clears throat> hold that for a second now before I glue any of the other parts on, I want to make sure these end pieces, because a part goes here, this part right here goes on the end of this. So I just want to make sure that it's really smooth. Sand it like that. That looks pretty good. Before I glue that on there, I want to, uh, I need to do this end as well. <clears throat> Excuse me. Sound kind can't of froggy today. Okay, and then get that seam line off of there again. Again, you can see the shiny and the dull, so you know how far you need to scrape it down. But in actuality, I may not have to do that. Let's take a look here. Uh, let's see, how does this go? So we got this part, we got this part. goes there yeah that part is completely hidden so if you don't get that perfect it's no big deal and then <clears throat> do this side as well Now, a lot of people like to sand instead of scrape, which is fine. And I do that depending on what the part is sometimes. But um, when you sand stuff like this, you want to make sure that you follow the contour of the curve like that. And likewise, you want to make sure that when you're scraping that down that you don't just stay on the seam itself, but you taper it into the surrounding part. Okay, so there's that. So all these parts are cleaned up and they're ready for assembly. So this part, like I showed earlier, goes here. 
actually you know what I'm gonna do this part first okay there's a there's a little rectangular shaped pin that fits in the corresponding hole there again I'm going to use to be extra thin carefully the nice thing is just that little bit glue will pull through the whole thing okay and then this goes here and then this part goes here like this I don't know if I mentioned it earlier because I'm doing this in segments but that little pin goes in that slot right there so that is why I'm glad I waited earlier and didn't um, cut that off because sometimes on the back of a part like that if you'll remember the sprue gate was right there the sprue gate will be kind of angled into the you know the the surface on the other side And you just clean that off but in this case something told me don't do it and I didn't and I'm glad that I didn't so anyway let's put some cement there and there and there we go we have that sub assembly now I don't know if it matters if this part is glued in place um, so I'm just gonna leave it for now because it's you know it's held in there quite solidly so I don't have to worry about it coming apart but uh, I'm not going to I'm not gonna glue this part here yet so anyway that is uh, one of those right there in this case um, step two which is this sub assembly so I am going to finish these and do these since they're all the same and then come back <laughs> okay now with all of these assembled it's time to put them on the lower hull so each one of these is kind of a key shape so there's a little tab or protrusion whatever you want to call it here and here but it's on the opposite side there so you have to pay attention to which ones go where now they'll only fit one way so and the way they have them identified is uh, one of the pieces from these sub assemblies is pointed out and that's the one you use so like F7 and F7 which was the first ones I built those go here so they fit like that okay so let's see how am I gonna glue these on here I think what I'm gonna do mm, I can fit them like this so I'll take my Tamiya extra thin And then just before I commit, I'm going to make sure the orientation is correct. So this longer piece sticks out front here, as indicated there. And I don't think you can put them in wrong, but it's always best to check the orientation. Okay. 
make sure it's pressed down really well and then take another one and do the same thing like that make sure it's pressed down And then, well, this one, you go with the F12, which was the second set. So, that one faces the opposite direction, like that. down really well like that so now I gotta do is just do the same to the other side <clears throat> okay now with those glued in place I need to cut off B14 and B13 um, to put here and there so before I glue these parts 14 and 13 on, I need to do a little scraping on them because there's a little bit of flash around the edges, undoubtedly because of the weird shape. Of this, uh, of this part, so I'm just gonna Scrape that little edge off and should be good to go. So it'll only, well, I guess you can make it going the wrong way, but it's got this little notch right here and that faces up. So I'm going to put it in place there. Carefully try and hold it. My Tamiya extra thin. There we go. And then I'm going to put some more right here. And make sure. That is pressed up against there like that to hold it there one thing that I've noticed about um, dragon plastic is it's kind of it's kind of soft and sometimes it takes a little bit longer for the glued part to set up because it almost becomes like gummy see I just marked it just pushing on it like that but it's all right okay then do the same thing on this side here Submit there. Push it in place like that. All right, so that concludes steps one through four. Okay, next <clears throat> I chose to put the wheels on. Now, normally I do not put the wheels in place because um, I like to do my painting and weathering on the underside here while it um, is exposed <clears throat> so I'm gonna see if I can glue parts 15 and 16 
and E5 uh, in place and put the wheels on afterwards. So let me get those parts cut off. Um, let's start with B, both parts B15. And I'll be cleaning these up the same way I've done everything else. That is a really tight fit. So um, I think I'm going to have to glue these on first because if I try and do those later uh, with the tracks and all that, it could be a problem. So Yeah, because of these, uh, I think those are mud scrapers. Keeps the mud and junk from building up inside of the uh, drive sprocket. And uh, it's just really, really tight. So I think I'm going to have to glue those on. These other ones I think I can glue um, separately, maybe. I'll have to check those as well. So yeah. So let me take a look. Actually, they popped off, popped off somewhat easily, but still, I think I'm gonna have to. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna glue these onto this part here, so it is nice and uh, secure, and then put those in place. I think that's what I'm gonna have to do. So let me, I'm gonna use for that, I'm gonna use this cement here. Set that aside. front wheels I'm gonna try and keep those mm. when the uh, tracks together is going to be an interesting prospect so I'm gonna let those dry I'm gonna go ahead and cut these parts off e3 4 and 5 they're all the same for both sides and then I've got more scrapers that go on the back here uh, both those are E24. <clears throat> so in looking at this, the first thing I have determined is that I am going to glue these in place. Contrary to what I usually do, but in this case, I think it's a necessity. So um, I get the thing lined up. There we go. All right, so that's going to go like that <clears throat> so i'm going to go ahead and put some cement on it and i will be committed there and there not my first choice but I think this is the best way to do it in this case. Okay, so these wheels here are uh, drive sprockets. Um, I think what I'm going to do Whoops. I 
think the best alternative for these is to not glue this part on yet, the actual uh, sprockets, because I'm going to want to be able to... This side is anchored in place, so it's not going anywhere. So when I put my track run on here, I'm going to use this as the anchor point. And then once I get up here, I'm going to need the flexibility of movement in order to um, allow these to turn just a little bit to engage the tracks correctly, if that makes sense. Because if I glue them in place, I could possibly have it aligned in a way that it won't engage the holes in the tracks. So I don't want that. So I'm going to glue these on here. And then, um, and I'm just assuming it's not real concise in the in the instructions how these are supposed to go. I mean, it's a pretty good idea, but I'm thinking that these need to be concentric here. So, like, the curve of the part I'm gluing on needs to match the curve of this front plate. So that. For good or ill, is what I am going to do. Boom. Committed. Make sure those are pushed down like that. Flip this over and do the other side the same way. Like that. Push those in place. And I'm going to add some more cement in here. Like that. And like that. Okay. Now I'm going to let those dry up good before I move on. Now while that's drying, I can go ahead and glue these on, uh, the two halves of the drive wheels, drive sprockets, and it's the same thing, a key and a slot there. So quite simple. And again, it's pretty positive, so you don't have to worry too much about the uh, teeth being misaligned. Okay, so I'll set those aside with the road wheels. Do the other one here. <clears throat> and here. Okay, set those aside. Okay, so now before I get too far, I need to glue these parts E24 in place. And those are right here. Those must be mud scraper type deals of some kind as well. So, whoops, those cut off. These will be easy to clean because the gates are on flat areas. I do need to Smooth that one out. Just a little bit of flash. Probably wouldn't be able to see it on camera, but I'm going to scrape that down. Like 
that. Okay, so I think <clears throat> I'm going to try something that I haven't done in a very long time. And I'm going to totally go against the grain from what I usually do, which is leaving the running gear off uh, before painting. I'm going to go ahead this time and I'm going to assemble all the running gear, including the tracks, to be painted later. Is it going to work? Well, we're going to find out. But uh, first, the first thing I need to do is I need to get the tracks assembled. So with these um, tracks, there are basically two different types of links. There's not a right and a left. <clears throat> there is without guide horn and with guide horn, and they just have to be alternated. So what I've done is I've put a piece of tape sticky side up on this piece of plastic here and I'm going to just assemble these tracks thusly what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the run for the bottom first so I'm just going to be putting them together like this alternating with and without guide horns until I have the length that I want. The instructions call for 17 of each type of uh, link per side for the bottom. So that's what I'm going to do first. Okay, as you can see on my desk here, there's quite a bit of mess. So let me explain what's going on. So I glued these parts on. And here is the problem I ran into. When I glued them on and I had them bottomed out. Now I, I could have done something incorrectly, but I don't think I did. But I could have. But these bogey units were flared out. Okay, I don't know if you can see that, but they were at an angle compared to the side of the hull and they were not in line with the drive sprockets in two ways. Number one, they were cocked out. Now the, the, the fit of the wheels, I've already glued them on here, was very sloppy on the axles. I mean, I had a good amount of twist that could be accomplished. So even if I tilted the wheel to where it was more in line with the drive sprocket and the side of the hull, albeit this part here was slanted still, that was straight, it put the wheel way out to the edge and did not line up with the drive sprockets, front or back. So I put them both on. I thought maybe these were sticking out too far, whatever. Those are in alignment. However, these were not. They were too far outboard and would not line up to where the teeth of the sprocket or the uh, tracks with the wheels in place would not line up with the drive sprocket in the holes in the track. So what I did is I cut these things off using a razor saw. Did a little bit of sanding, a little bit of messing around, and now at least they're the right distance out from the drive sprockets. So fortunately, the way these things were designed, there's a natural hole inside of the axle so as you can see, there's these indentations here where the center line is in relation to this. So guessing the center line is not a problem. Okay. So what I'm doing is as you can see here, I've drilled these out. 
these all I had to do was take this piece of wire which I'll get to in a little bit they fit right in like that almost exactly the right size so then all I had to do was find a drill bit and drill it to correspond like that all right so what I'm using to drill it is one of my little drill bits and this cool little Tamiya drill electric handy drill Tamiya craft tools works really good let me demonstrate I just put it where that center line is and drill it out so my wire fits just right now all I have to do is get these wires glue that in there cut it off and then that will line up here then I can use a section of track on the bottom I put it in place make sure everything's lined up properly and then get some glue on there and let it set up that way everything should be in alignment so I'm gonna work on that a little bit I'm gonna try and do one side see how it works and then come back and talk about um, whether it worked or not and what I had to do to do it okay so after much overthinking of this uh, I finally got it and it was actually quite simple all I did was um, as I said in the earlier little segment clip whatever you want to call it I glued these pins in here and drilled uh, corresponding holes in the um, mounts on the hull and I was trying to think of a jig I could do. I was trying to think how I could incorporate the track run and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, you know, this is flipping stupid. It's not going to work. So all I did was I got some of this cement. Uh, Model Master liquid cement. I just put a nice bead all around the edge like this. Got these suckers, stuck them in and just eyeballed them lined them up lined them up eyeballed them lined them up and boom um there it is it is really flat along the run and you know sometimes just eyeballing things is good enough so i didn't have to make a jig or anything weird like that uh they the wheels line up fine and all of them it looks like all of them should be contacting the actual track so I'm gonna let that dry a little bit before I do the other side because I don't want anything coming apart so getting back to the tracks um, here is something that is uh, interesting so This could almost be a video by itself just talking about these plastic magic tracks or any kind of tracks like that that you glue together that are made out of polystyrene so i laid these out and on a piece of tape as i showed earlier had it all nice and flat smooth and and the surface that they were on was this right here so it's rigid plastic so it's not like it's flexible or anything like that um too flexible and I put this on there and I put cement all over it and let it sit. When I picked them up, um, it kind of, it one of one of broke parts so that I need more cement. So I put more cement on it and I put more cement on the edges to make it plenty strong because this bottom part doesn't have to be flexible. And I wanted that rigid in case I needed to have more serve as a template for these, the suspension on the hull. But I let it sit, and actually I let it sit for four or five days because I was out of town. But if you can see here, and this is already after I've tried to fix it, you can see kind of a bow to it. Okay, and I have a theory, and I'm going to test it one of these days, because oftentimes people have link and length tracks, and they will go to all the trouble and get it all together and stuff, but then in the end there will be gaps or gaps will appear 
I think that what happens with these tracks is when you put the cement on and it gases off, evaporates, whatever you want to call it, I think it shrinks the plastic. So like as it as it as it dries, it kind of the joint seems to diminish in size just a little bit. Hence, in this case, since I put cement only on one side, it made it bow up like this. And I have used magic tracks on other kits before that have sag to them. And I'll have a pretty decent amount of sag, but after letting it sit for a while, week or two, the sag is not as pronounced as when I first glued it together. So that's going to be an experiment in the future. I'm going to get some magic tracks or something like that that, you know, I have spares of. And I am going to um, experiment with it using measurements and all that kind of stuff and kind of see what happens. Because I really think that's the situation. Because, it, you know, it's like a lot of times, especially with Lincoln Link tracks, especially on TACOMs. I did a TACOM kit that was really, really hard. Um, it came out in the end, but it was really, really close tolerances because they were live tracks on a an American vehicle. So there's no sag. You know, the part of the reason they call them live tracks is there's no sag. They're under constant tension. And so it's a lot closer tolerances when they're glued together on the running gear. And I had a it was a real chore to get that to fit right. So that's just an aside to this whole project, but just something to take note of. It was just kind of interesting. But what I'm going to do is once this stuff dries, I'll be able to glue these to the uh, to the wheels, and uh, you know it should flatten it out. So we'll see. But anyway, I'm going to let that stuff dry, and then we'll come back and do the other side. Okay, so. Here is what I'm talking about. This is the one that's dried for a long time. This is the one that I just put onto this piece of tape. Now, this isn't probably exact science, but I put these things together really tightly, as close as they'll go together. The little part of the link right here is butted into this opening right here as tightly as it'll go okay now granted there may be a little bit of give but in looking at this when lining this end exactly together when you get up here there is quite a bit of difference so here's what I'm going to do I am going to, I'm going to mark this stuff. Uh, I'm going to get another piece of tape, run it across here, and run it. This this link isn't going to be glued in. This is just to act as a spacer to keep this part level. As a matter of fact, I can probably take it off right now. Um, Okay, so I'm going to mark this, and I'm going to put cement on here, and see if I am correct. I want to get this off the camera just for a second so I can make sure this is butted up right on the end. Whoops. Uh, where's my tweezers? There they are. Got that piece of tape kind of crooked. Okay, so there's that one. And I'm doing this off camera because I want to make sure I get it lined up exactly and I don't want to get my noggin in the way of the camera. Okay. So that lines up with the ends where the pins go through if they really had pins, like the real deal. So I am going to slather the cement on there and we're going to see what happens. So 
So I'm just using Tamiya Extra Thin. And I'm going to be generous with it because I want to make sure these things don't come apart. Running the road wheels are going to be all across that anyway, so it's not really going to mar the finish. And yes, if you're seeing little ejector pin marks, they are there. I'm not cleaning them up. Sorry, folks. Because by the time I get this thing together, glued, painted, a little bit of road dust and stuff, you ain't even going to notice it. And if you do, well, that means you got really good eyes and you're got a, just awesome. Me? Don't care. So, I'm going to glue all this. So we shall see what happens. Now, I just thought of something. This may not pull away from this tape going across just because it's stuck to the tape underneath. But again, we've got the length here of this and this. So we'll see if it draws up tight enough to make this exactly the same length as this one. And I really think it will. So we'll keep an eye on that. Meantime, I'll work on some other stuff. Okay, so all of this is dry enough for now. So what I've done is I've put these sprockets in place. I haven't glued them, as I've mentioned before. But now I need to glue in these mud scrapers or whatever they are, E24. And they need to go down inside of there. So what I'm going to do is sling it around like that first and then here let's do this there we go okay that looks pretty good Using to me extra thin. They're perfect. Wow. Astonishing. Alright, so we got that side, so I'll flip it over and do the other side. Alright, here's what we've got. So I had to do a lot of this off camera just because my head would have gotten in the way and it was kind of complicated. But using the kit's recommendations for the amount of lengths, here's what I did. I did the whole bottom section as I showed earlier. Um, then I laid that out on some tape and did the recommended links here which was 10 of the guide horn type and 10 with the type without guide horn glued those on the end let those sit for a little while but while they were still a little bit flexible i did this side here which is nine and eight and then because i left the one um the one wheel unglued I was able to wrap everything around and wrapped it around here and got that kind of set okay the bottom hasn't been glued yet but then using again the recommended quantity of lengths I did 19 of uh, 19 of each for this top run so once I did that and I let it sit a little bit if you'll remember earlier I mentioned that I think there's some shrinkage due to um, the, the uh, cement curing. Well, I came up one link short. So that creates a bit of a dilemma. If I were to take or, or if I were to add um, another link back here, it would look funny because I would either have to add 
one of the links without a guide horn or with a guide horn and then that would be incorrect. So I left that side, glued it together, and then added my other link over here and I just used um, one of the uh, links without a guide horn and you can't even see that I've done that. So that's a way to get around it if you're if your uh, link doesn't end up being right. So I was able to get a nice sag. So what I need to do now is I need to glue the bottom here and I'm going to do that with it sitting flat so all of the wheels sit flat because uh, if you remember you have some wiggliness going on here in order which helps to keep these wheels down on the bottom. So I'm going to glue those. Then once those dry, then according to the illustration, tracks touch here, here, and here. So what I'll do is I'll glue that there like that and that there like that. But I'm going to do the bottom first. Then once I do that, then that will be all set up and I can move on to the other side. All right, now with the, I had this clamp to the edge of my table. And <clears throat> here and here, so I could make sure this was perfectly flat. And then all the wheels were touching like they should be. So now all I have to do is glue down the, um, these tracks here or the track to these three wheels here so let's see here let me yep, that'll work so let's see how am I going to clamp that that's not gonna work well that might actually all I need to do is just of something in there like a piece of paper towel or something probably or uh, I don't think these are yeah those are not gonna work yeah I'll just do something like that Yeah, that looks good. So, trying to be really careful because I don't want cement to seep through and touch the paper towel because I'm gonna have some paper towel fuzzies to deal with and I don't want that so there we go so now we'll let that cure up for a little bit all right so there it is and I must say that I am quite stoked with how that turned out. I was kind of concerned at first. <clears throat> Number one, I haven't done magic tracks in a very long time. And with the problems with the suspension, I was afraid I was going to have some issues, but it turned out fine. So now I need to repeat the whole process on the other side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to end this video right here and next time when I come back um, I'll be up to step number eight it looks like which is where I start putting hull parts together so it calls for putting um, Zimmerit 
on certain parts. I'm going to do all that. <clears throat> if it all works out like I think it will, I'm going to do that once I have the superstructure and everything assembled. I won't glue all the small parts uh, because I'll put those on after the... Um, after the uh, Zimmerit, but I don't want to glue the Zimmerit on before I have everything put together. That way I can make sure I get things lined up and corners match and all that kind of stuff. So that is the plan. So for now, that's it. I'll do the rest of this off camera and next time when I come back, we'll start on uh, step number eight. So as always, thanks for watching Plastic Models by Regular Dude. If you liked the video, please hit the like button. Uh, if you haven't subscribed yet and you want to see more of this build or any of my other builds, hit the subscribe button and um, hit the notifications if you wanted to tell you when new stuff's being posted. So that's it. For now, thanks again for watching Plastic Models by Regular Dude. Until next time, I will see you all later.